Welcome to Mom's Life Made Simple, the podcast for moms who want to go from chaos to calm, from overwhelmed to organized, and to find balance between family responsibilities and personal growth. I'm your host, Chanel Nielsen. Let's make mom life simple. Hello and welcome to Mom's Life Made Simple. I'm your host, Chanel Nielsen, and I am super glad to be here with you today. Today, I'm going to talk about a lesson I learned from watering my basil plant. This is just something, a little simple experience that I had that taught me. And I think that there's a lot of applicable lessons here. So we're going to dive into those. But before we do, let me share the review of the week. This comes from Lynette Shepard. Lynette said, Motherhood can be overwhelming sometimes due to the sheer volume of things that we moms have on our plates. This podcast provides both inspiration and practical tools to help avoid the overwhelm. The guests are awesome and Chanel is so wise and helpful. No matter your stage of motherhood, this podcast is gold. So huge thank you to Lynette for listening, for leaving the podcast review. I so appreciate when you guys leave reviews. If you haven't yet, go on over and leave me a review on iTunes. And maybe next time yours will be the review of the week. I also love it when you guys share the podcast. That totally helps it to grow. And if all you do is listen, I love that too. Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. And let's dive into today's topic. So I had an experience recently. A while back, I was at the grocery store and I needed basil for some um, recipe I was making. And they had the fresh potted basil. And you've probably seen this. Sometimes they sell it at, at Trader Joe's or other grocery stores. And it made more sense, like it costs less to buy the fresh plant basil than it did to buy the basil in the package. So I thought, okay, great. Well, I'll get that. And then we can have basil for next time too. So I bought this little potted basil and we've had it for a while and I am notoriously bad at keeping plants alive. I just, I forget to water them. I don't pay attention. I just don't even think of it. Anyways, so one day I decided, I looked at my plant and it was looking kind of sad. I hadn't watered it in a while and I thought, oh, I better water this basil. So I got some water and I poured it into the basil. Now the the dirt was so dry that what happened was it's in a little plastic container with holes at the bottom. It went through, the water went through the dirt, out the sides of the container, all over the plate it was sitting on. And so I saw this water just go through the plant onto the plate. And I was like, well, dang, I guess I should have watered it before now. Should have paid more attention to this basil plant. But As I walked back by the plant a little bit later, I saw that some of the water on the plate was gone. It had been absorbed into the basil. And when I looked again later, all of the water was gone and had been absorbed, probably not into the basil yet, right, but into the dirt. And this really struck me. I picked up some things from this as I thought about this basil. And so I wanted to share those lessons with you that I learned. One is we soak up what what we need when we need it. And that was the main lesson. I thought, that's so cool. Like the basil, the plant wasn't prepared and it wasn't ready for all the water that I was dumping in after neglecting it for a while. It just wasn't ready. But when it was ready, that water was still accessible and available to it and it sucked it up in its own time and in its own way. And I think that we are very much like that. We soak up what we need when we need it. So I have four lessons from this parable of the basil plant that I wanted to share with you. First, because we soak up what we need when we need it, there is a need for repetition. It's not enough to learn something one time and think that that's going to be enough. Oh, I've learned that. I'm done with it. You know, lesson learned. I'm done. Very rarely in our lives is that the case. More often, we need to learn something and hear it again and again and again before it soaks in, before it becomes a part of us. Especially when there are things that we need to take action on, a lot of times we can hear something and think, oh yeah, that's a great idea. Oh, I should do that. But it takes a while before we actually pull it into ourselves enough to do the thing, to take the action. 
So this need for repetition means a couple things. It means that as learners, it's okay to listen to the same podcast twice. It's okay to read the same book over and over again. It's okay to be in the same environment learning essentially the same thing because we need to hear it more than once. It also means as teachers, we don't need to be afraid to repeat ourselves. In fact, it helps people to be able to learn and to process the information if they hear it more than once. So don't be afraid to say things more than once. It can be helpful if we say it in different ways because it can be absorbed differently if we say it in different ways. But sometimes even if you say the exact same thing in the exact same way, that repetition was exactly what was needed by the learner. So second lesson, even if we're learning the exact same thing, We change so that what we get from the experience changes. So in this example with the basil, I gave it water. It was the same water that it soaked in, but what changed? Well, the actual dirt itself softened up and expanded and allowed the water to come in. When I first put the water in, the plant wasn't ready, but as I don't know exact the exact mechanisms of plants and dirt, but what I think happened, I'm going to hypothesize here. If I'm wrong, you guys can write in and tell me how this actually works. But I think as it got wet, it started to, the particles kind of start to expand and create space that allows the water to be drawn in. That sounds like a pretty good theory. I'm going to go with that. So what I take from that is that we even if we're getting the exact same things, like I mentioned with repetition, right? We're reading the exact same book. But if you read a book, say in high school, and I've had this experience, maybe you had to read a book for your high school English class and you don't really get the same things out of that book in high school as you do now as a parent with your life experience. You might see that book in a totally different way. The book is exactly the same. The only thing that's changed is you and your able your ability to receive the things in that book and the experiences that you've had that have changed you that allow different things to stand out and be meaningful to you. All right, so number 3 lesson for my basil plant is don't give too much at a time. So because this plant hadn't been watered in a while and was really dry, it just wasn't ready for a lot of water. And sometimes I think this lesson for me is really a lesson as a parent. It's so easy to want to just tell your kids all the things, all the life lessons, all the wisdom that you've acquired in your, in my case, 43 years of living. Maybe when I'm telling them how to, you know, like they're responsible for cleaning the kitchen and I'm letting them know what needs to happen in the kitchen. I want to tell them every single little step and give them all the instructions. And when I give them too much at a time, they can kind of shut down. If it's too much, they're just not ready and really nothing gets in. So as parents, it's really important that we don't give too much at a time. And how do we know what too much is? How do we soil test, if you will? We need to ask a lot of questions. We need to have a conversation and let our kids be contributors. And so to say to our children, okay, you're in charge of cleaning the kitchen today. What are you going to do first would be a great place to start this conversation. Or what part feels confusing to you? What are you not sure about? And they might come back and say, I've got this. I know what I'm doing. And then later in the process, come to you and say, okay, now I have a question. Now I don't know what to do. They weren't ready at the beginning for that information, but later they might be ready. And this is, of course, applicable to a lot of other things. We need to make sure that what we're giving is appropriate. So when we're teaching life lessons, when we're just having conversations, asking questions to the people that we're talking to or the people that we're teaching is really going to help gauge what they're ready for. And when we get a feel for what they're ready for, we're going to give them the appropriate amount of learning, of understanding that they can soak in. And number four, only, and so number four lesson from the basil plant is only the water the plant used was beneficial to the plant. So when the water went through the plant, onto the plate and it was just sitting there on the plate, 
it wasn't helping the plant at all. The same happens for us. How many times are you just watering and watering and watering? This might come in the form of listening to podcast after podcast after podcast. It might come in the form of reading, watching, scrolling, whatever it is. If you're just taking in, taking in, taking in information, but you're not doing anything with it, if it's not really being used by you, it's not beneficial to you. So when you read a book or when you listen to a podcast or when you get information, what are you doing with that information? The goal of learning in really any capacity should be change. Because I listened to this, because I watched or read this, I'm now going to do something differently. Now, it doesn't have to be monumental. I get caught in that trap like, oh, well, then does it even count if I don't, you know, do something really big? It might just be a little shift in your thoughts. You're going to think about things a little bit differently. It might be very small, but it's still a change. And it's powerful because that means you're using whatever information you got. So you have to apply what you learn. And the question I want you to ask yourself is, are you changing because of what you're learning? One bonus. So these are the four lessons that I learned from the basil plant. And one bonus thought that I just wanted to share. I had a coach once who would ask us to review our day and to take any experience that we had had and then apply it in different areas of our lives. What can I learn from this experience that applies to my body? What can I learn that applies to my identity, to my spirituality, to my relationships, and to my contribution to the world? As you look for lessons, so this was a simple experience that I had with watering my basil plant, and yet it taught me and I learned from it. What experiences are happening in your day that you're learning from? What experiences are you having that you're not learning from, but you could? Pay attention because life is a great teacher. And as you process the things that are happening and put those into lessons for you and apply them to what they mean to you, you're going to continue to grow. You're going to continue to learn. You're going to find these lessons and receive them in a way that's really tailored to your learning style because you're tapping into that innate wisdom that you have. I think that, you know, several years ago, I I probably had the same thing happen with a basil plant and the water just fell through and I didn't think anything of it. But this time I was ready for the lesson. And so look around. What lessons are you ready for that life is trying to teach you. All right, that is all I have for you today. And I want to close with an invitation. So this podcast comes out in March. April 4th is the next Mom's Life Made Simple group coaching. Things are shifting in my business, and I don't know how much longer we will have live group coachings where I'm teaching the course live. This is a really great way to learn. If you are a person who learns by asking questions, by interacting, by meeting with a group and connecting with other women, then definitely come in and join April's group coaching. To get more information about that, you can go to chanelnielsen.com forward slash coaching. It will have all the information and That is limited to only 10 women. So if you are on the fence about that, if you're thinking about it, get on a call now before those spots are gone. ChanelNielsen.com forward slash forward slash coaching. Thanks again for being here and we'll talk to you next week. Bye. Thanks for listening to Mom's Life Made Simple. Need some help making your mom life simple? I offer group coaching programs using my four-step method called the mom's method. This is a process of manifestation, organization, mobilization, and simplification that will give you the balance, progress, and joy you're looking for. Visit chanelnielsencoaching.com or find me on Instagram or Facebook at Chanel Nielsen Coaching. I love to hear from you. Reach out with your questions, your feedback, and let me know how I can help make your mom life simple.